Okay, I am calling uh, this meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee uh, to order on February 9th at 1 p.m., 1.02 p.m. And our first order of business is to elect a chair. Do we have any nominations for a chair? Oh, sorry, didn't raise my hand. Sorry, Mandy Jo, look at me, I'm already out of practice. <laughs> you can you can go, go Alex. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I'm the chair. I think this is, I don't get to be chair very often, but. This <laughs> is what happens no. when there's no chair. Chaos. Whoever wants to go. Well, I raised my hand first, so I'll go. Right. Um, Man Manny Joe, back. please, please go. Okay. Is there a second? Did we have to have a second? We not I really. Didn't hear, I didn't hear what Mandy Joe said. Oh, I nominated Kathy. Okay. And then I asked if there was a second, maybe. I think second. Okay. Sorry. Are there any other nominations for chair of the Joint Capital Planning Committee? No? And Kathy, do you, um, if you are voted, will you take on that responsibility given all the other <laughs> work you're doing with the uh, elementary yes, school the committee? Yes, although last night I thought of why am I doing that, but yes. Okay. I, I, <laughs> yes, I will. All right. Um, so all those in favor of uh, nominating Kathy as chair of the committee? Do I have to do roll call? Do I have to do roll call? I probably have to do roll call. Technically, right? yes. All right, I'll do roll call. Uh, Kathy Shane? Yes. Farah Amin? Yes. Mandy Jo Haneke? Hi. Alex Fave? Yes. Pamela Rooney? Yes. Jennifer Shaw? Yes. Okay, it's a unanimous uh, vote, six uh, in uh four and zero against and one absent all right kathy i turn it over to you for vice chair okay um nominations for vice chair and i actually i'll nominate alex um second would are there any other nominations or and people can self-nominate if anyone else would would like to be <laughs> I, I'm curious whether Pam wants to do it, if Pam would be interested. I know Alex has had a number of years. Um, Pam, Pam would be interested, but I am very, very happy to be helpful in any way possible if Alex is interested in doing it. So I'm, I'm not going to nominate myself. Okay, uh, what I could do is do two words um, and then or Alex. Uh, I mean, if Alex, I don't know whether you would like to keep doing it or not, but what Alex has been doing is if I'm absent and I haven't been, she chairs, but she's also been um, very focused on the report. Um, and I would, how would I fray, phrase this? She keeps me literate and accurate would be the way I would do it. That <laughs> the choice choice of words is is reflects what the discussion is. So those have been the two main functions of the vice chair because Sean is running all the content pretty much. So so do we have just one candidate then? Okay, then I guess I do a quick roll call vote. Um, for all. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Jennifer. Yes. Alex. I forgot to ask you if you're willing to do it. Are you willing to do it? It's fine, yes. Okay, yes. Alex. <laughs> Mandy. Aye. And Pam. Yeah. Okay, so that's unanimous. The one other thing we need to do before Sean sets out, um, it, it, I don't think he put it on the agenda, but this committee, Pam, we take our own minutes. We don't have a minute taker. So we've been doing volunteers for minutes. And we do have a format that I can send you from the last time. So it becomes a, you know, it's, it's pretty standard from everything else we've done. And then people can just update it. So is there a volunteer for the minutes for today? Pam, Pam says yes. So Pam just volunteered. And we are getting the Zoom. We can get the Zoom recording to you pretty much right after the meeting. So, you know, the extent you want to do a lot of notes or less lesser notes and wait to watch the video. Um, okay. okay. Okay, Sean, it's yours. All right. Um, 
We have introductions on the agenda next. I don't know if we need introductions. Does everybody know everybody else? Nope. Pam, you don't know everybody else or we don't need to do introductions? Why don't we, <laughs> why don't we just- love introductions. Right, why don't we just do a quick go around and um, say your name and uh, what board uh, you are on. Um, Farah, do you want to start? Sure. I'm Farah Amin and I'm on the Jones Library Board of Trustees. And I, well, I'm Kathy Shane. I'm on the council. Um, so I'll just, and Sean, thank you for doing that. So Jennifer. Jennifer Shaw, Amherst School Committee. Alex. Dave Jones Library with Farah. And Mandy. Um, Mandy Joe Haneke, I'm with the council. And when we get through the rest, I'm curious who the other school committee member is that can't be here today. So, so Irv Rhodes is the other um, school committee member. He was on um, the committee last year and he's um, been on school committee various points for a long time. So, um, so that's the other member. And I'm Pam Rooney, council former, former town meeting member. So welcome, Pam. Um, so, so Sean will lead us through. And then for people who are new, and in this case, it's you, Pam, we can, we'll make sure you get a copy of the report we did last year. You know, at the, so you, you'll, be, you'll be seeing as Sean looks it through, but like to, it gives you a good sense of, of what we as a committee did. Yep. Okay. So today's meeting will probably be on the shorter side. So wise move, taking the minutes for today. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna just quickly go over uh, the role of the Joint Capital Planning Committee, do, um, do a quick uh, run through last year's plan, just to kind of um, bring everybody back up to speed with what was approved last year, and maybe do a initial review of some of the comp um, more complicated pieces of the, the report. So then you'll hear it today, and then you'll also hear it next week, and I think that'll help. Um, and then quickly go through the timeline and process for the rest of, um, uh, the Joint Capital Planning Committee's uh, session, and then see if there's public comment and adjourn. So I'm going to share my screen. And sorry, I have to have a cough drop uh, in, otherwise I'm coughing nonstop. So, all right, can everybody see my um, yes. my screen? Okay. Uh, so this is the agenda. <laughs> all right. So this is from the um, the new, uh, relatively new charter. Um, these are the sections that relate really to the work of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And I think I'll start with the, the second one, B. So the charter calls for the town manager uh, to create a capital improvement program each year, uh, which will include a clear summary um, of the projects uh, over the next five years um, with uh, supporting data, cost estimates, um, how we're going to pay for it, uh, rough time schedules, um, and then some estimated annual costs of operating and maintaining the facilities. And that this uh, report will be prepared with the advice of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. So what we've been doing um, the last few years is that we will present a, a very preliminary plan that may or may not be in balance. Um, and then the um, we'll go through each of the projects that are proposed for the upcoming year. Department heads uh, responsible for those projects will come and present information on them. And then depending on uh, the committee's um, decisions and uh, what they think is the right way to go, uh, there'll be a discussion, deliberation, and um, recommendations. And sometimes that may be, uh, we're not in balance, so we have to remove some projects, and here's what you should remove. Uh, maybe there's something that was heard that's not in the plan that should be in the plan. Um, so really, the, it's up to the committee what they want, want to do for the recommendation. And that recommendation will go uh, to the town manager, and then that will get factored into the final capital improvement program that gets presented to the council on May 1st. Another um, component that we present is um, the inventory. So that's the top section that uh, the charter calls for capital inventory that we update annually. Uh, so you'll see an, an updated inventory uh, for vehicles and facilities. And it's something that we're, we're trying to expand. We're not quite where we wanna be in terms of having a, an in inventory of every um, every asset of the town, including enterprise funds and things like that, but um, it's in better shape than it was previously. And then another piece just to be aware of is that we have a resident capital request process. 
And so there was a resident capital request window that was open, uh, I think through the end of December. We have received the number of capital requests. And so, um, except for the ones that were ineligible, meaning we, we just, the town can't do what it, um, legally do what it's calling for. Uh, those requesters will get an opportunity to present their projects at the next meeting. Um, I've invited them to come uh, starting at two o'clock and to present for three to five minutes their projects between two and three o'clock. Um, most of them, most of the requests are road, uh, road uh, and public safety type improvements, speed bumps, things like that. Uh, they'll be posted in the packet sometime, probably tomorrow. I'll put all the information in the packet um, or most of the information in the packet for next week. Uh, but you'll see those requests, you'll hear the presentations. Um, and then again, that'll be part of your recommendation process, whether to uh, accept some of those projects, uh, more analysis of those projects, reject them, so on. Um, anything I'm missing, Mandy, Kathy, you guys, have, uh, Alex, you've been part of the process for a while. No, the only thing I might you might want to add, and I see Pam has a question, is when Sean comes to us with the this year proposed. Um, and then the updated five year, the resident capital requests don't have a line. Um, so one of the things when we're looking at them is if we end up saying yes to any of them, we would also have to recommend where the money comes from, you know, or, you know, and that that would be part of our process. So um, and then I had a question, then I see Pam has her hand up too. So you said they're on the agenda for next week. Does everyone, who, I'm this time is everyone who submitted them, are they aware of it and the extent to which there's other, their residents who are behind those who actually proposed it, are they aware of it? Um, so I've emailed all the, uh, so when they submit the request, they have to provide a contact um, email. So I've communicated to everyone, again, all the ones that are um, eligible. There was one that was not eligible because it was a request to essentially um, sort of set up a fund for an outside group that um, for, for their capital repairs, which are not really um, something we can do. Um, but for all the ones that are eligible, I've emailed them and again, invited them to come next week, starting at two o'clock. Um, they're not required to, so just, um, I know at least one individual said he'll try to get there, but if not, uh, provide some sort of written statement. Um, you'll have all the requests in front of you. So I think we'll talk about each one. Um, but yeah, they've all been offered. Reach out to them directly to offer them the chance to present their project. Okay, I see Pam, your hand is up. Pam. Sure, thank you. Um, I had one question is, is there a set amount of money for uh, resident requests? And secondly, do we, or do the, does the town have a process um, to compare uh, the priority of something that comes in as a citizen request compared to the, the priority list, the standing list that the town departments have already prepared? And that's a great question. So that's sort of been the crux of some of our issues with the resident capital request the last few years. So we've, we did make some changes this year. So one thing we did is we have capped resident capital requests at $50,000, um, sort of a maximum. Uh, so none of the requests can exceed that um, amount. Uh, we don't have a set funding source, so it will be part of this committee's uh, deliberation, also the town manager's deliberation, whether it can fit, you know, what, how many to do and whether they can fit within the total amount of funds allocated towards capital. Um, we, you'll see when we go through the plan in a second that we set aside a certain fixed amount for capital, and then this is what would, that, that amount would have to cover any requests that are approved or recommended. Um, and so the process this year is, uh, again, a little bit different. The requests that have come in, I've sent them off to department heads that are sort of responsible for that area. So really the requests fall into two buckets, I would, um, DPW and, and road repairs, and then some sustainability uh, requests, things like bike stations, e-bike stations. Uh, so I've sent those off to Stephanie Ciccarello and Gilford Mooring, and I've asked them to provide um, some sort of analysis or, or feedback on each request to help this committee uh, and in your deliberation process about, you know, does does approving this re, you know, break some sort of precedent? Is it not advisable for other reasons? Is it maybe it's, you know, a great request and it's, and, you know, it's consistent with what we're trying to do. Um, so I have asked them to try to provide some analysis to this committee of the, uh, of the resident capital requests. Thank you. 
Sean, can I just follow up on that? Did um, the one other committee is TAC. Um, and last time, for those of who were on last year, one of the issues we ran through is both the DPW got involved, but was this even a priority on the TAC list? Or when we're looking at if there are sidewalks, crosswalks, or you know what the mix is, that TAC might be, does when does TAC get involved would be, is my question on. Um, yeah, so we tried that, we tried to streamline the process this year because again, it was confusing about whether something should go to TAC or not go to TAC. Um, so we've advised not to go to TAC yet for to come to this committee. If this committee recommends it, um, then it could be something that Guilford Mooring uh, works with them on if it needs to, if it needs to go through them. Um, I think that's a, process that's still being worked out. But I think because we reduced the amount um, this year, the projects are on the smaller side in terms of what they are. Again, they're they're sort of like speed bumps and uh, so, you know safety signs and things like that. Um, I think they're things that are more tangible that uh, Guilford could just weigh in on and you guys could decide whether or not to recommend them. They're not as big as a, you know repaving a whole road or anything like that. Any other? Yeah, but that is an evolving process to your point, Kathy, how, how the tech. Yeah, uh, no, and, and last year it was a, a long discussion on how we could avoid. Um, there's a movie downtown called Living, but it's got a DPW whose main job is to send it to someplace else. And then when it comes back, not to act, you know, it's one of these, you're going like this. And we were, we, we didn't want, we wanted it to be not a, you should have gone somewhere else first. Um, yeah, well, well counselor. Devlin Gothier, I think, lived there, right? She was the one that submitted a request uh, to the TAC and was told to go to JCPC, and then she submitted the JCPC and was told to go to the TAC, and I think that's why this year we just decided um, to say everything from the JCPC to start with, and we, we reduced the amount um, to make it, uh, you know, more distinct projects. All right, any other questions before I move on to um, uh, reviewing last year's plan? I think we're ready. Okay. All right, so this is last year's plan. I'm not gonna cover, um, I'll go through it kind of quickly. So again, this just outlines what the role of Joint Capital Planning Committee is. And this is in your packet if you wanna review it in more detail later. Uh, we give a little overview of the process. Um, you know, a lot of this is to help uh, the public understand the process. There's a little chart that divvies up uh, the projects and sort of what uh, departments they fall under. We'll talk about the timeline for this year, so I won't spend any time here. All right, so this is the first um, slide I want to focus on. And again, this is this is probably the most complicated piece. So I just want to go through today quickly as a refresher and see if there's any questions. And then we'll go through it again um, next week when we look at the FY24 plan. So. Uh, this chart is a summary of the capital improvement program, what's being proposed for FY23, and then also the four out years. And it summarizes the funds that are available for capital and then how we propose to use them. And it does not include enterprise funds. Just uh, one caveat, this is all focused on only the general fund. The enterprise funds um, have their own process and a separate funds for capital. So starting at the top uh, is levy information. And the way uh, we do capital in this town is we determine a percentage of the levy to dedicate to capital. And so that's why you'll see the prior levy, what the allowable increase is, if there's any new growth, that, that produces the levy limit estimate for that year. And then where it says cash capital goal of 10%, that's where we assign a percentage of that levy to dedicate towards capital. Uh, so, for example, in FY23, we were able to achieve our goal of 10%, um, and that was 5.7 million allocated towards capital. And that goal is based on the, the previous year's final levy. That's why it goes back a year um, in terms of uh, the, the number you're multiplying by 10%. And then we project out uh, how much we think we're going to dedicate going forward. And so uh, it could be 10%. We, we were projecting in 10.5%, and, and you'll, you'll see what it is next week. So again, this is on the revenue side. So below that are other sources of revenue that are available for capital. So debt exclusion override is a new one that's been introduced because of the school project, and we wanted to kind of fold everything into this uh, summary. So we've got a line projected for debt exclusion override. 
we have reserves, if any reserves uh, from the capital stabilization fund or any of the stabilization funds uh, were gonna be used to support the capital plan. That's in here. Community Preservation Act debt come, ha, runs through our capital process, only the debt. So you'll see a, a revenue source come in from the Community Preservation Act and then it goes out. Uh, it's really a wash. So you don't have to worry too much about that line, but just so you know why it's there, it comes in and goes out uh, for, for CPA debt projects. Uh, Comcast funding is something that was um, part of the last agreement, townwide agreement we had with Comcast. They were going to provide so much capital funding. And so this funding is coming into the town and we're using it to offset the cost of the INET project, which is a borrowing of uh, the municipal fiber uh, throughout town. And so again, this is for a certain period of time, but you'll see it as a revenue source and it's really offsetting debt um, down below. Other uh, is for sort of miscellaneous funding sources. The, the, the most common one in that bucket is the ambulance fund. So we have a, the town has an ambulance fund, which is a receipts reserve for appropriation fund. And all that means is that we can't use it until we have the money in the fund. You have to have it in to, and then appropriate from there. And so whenever uh, our EMTs go out on a call, they bill insurance, all those insurance revenues go into this ambulance fund, and then we can use it to support the budget each year, which we do. And we can also use it to support capital costs um, related to the ambulance operation. And so you'll see some certain projects in there that say other as the funding source, and they're, they're most typically um, ambulance type, uh, ambulance equipment. And then the last one is state aid, and that is pretty much exclusively chapter 90 funds from the state, which go towards um, road repairs uh, and, and costs associated with road repairs. And then the last one sort of in the middle here is borrowing. And so if there are any projects that we are proposing to borrow for, it wouldn't come out of a current funding source up above. It means we'd be incurring debt and then we'd have to pay, uh, we'd be paying it from one of those sources in the future. So any amount related to borrowing goes in this borrowing uh, row in the middle. Mandy Jo? Yeah, um, I have a question about the state aid number. Um, mm -hmm. With the new um, fair share amendment having passed, do we know what that will look like in terms of Will that show up when you figure when the state figures out how they're going to allocate that money, particularly with transportation? Is some of that going to show up on state aid in this number at some point? And do you expect it any uh, that any of it would show up for our FY24 projected numbers? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we don't know for sure if they're going if the state is going to include estimated revenues in their FY24 budget. We'll know on March 1st, so we'll know by the time the plan is finalized. Um, whether the governor is assuming any any of it. Um, and, and I don't think we know for sure yet either exactly how those funds for transportation are gonna flow through to cities and towns. I think the chapter 90 program would make sense. So you, you already have a program sort of set up um, dedicated for transportation. But the thing I don't know is, you know, if they've decided, okay, we're gonna divvy this up proportionally to every city and town, you know, the way that chapter 90 is done. Um, or, and also if the things that are eligible through chapter 90 are, exactly the same as sort of what they were thinking when that was passed because uh, really it's for transportation so um so we're not positive exactly how those funds are going to flow through the cities and towns yet but we should have uh, when the governor's budget comes out if there's any included i think we'll have a much better idea at that point jennifer so um what does the 59.9 million in borrowing for fiscal 23 represent uh, so that was for the building projects. We wanted to keep a placeholder in there for uh, the four building projects. So I'll show you in a second, but I think it was probably the um, a couple of the building projects is why that's in there. That was deep. And Jennifer, what we're looking, just so everyone is clear, we're looking at what we did last year. Yeah. This is not, he hasn't updated it yet. So this is literally the result of last year. And there was a line for DPW when there was a line for um, the fire station. And and there and the library might have been in there, you know, so that it okay. was. So so I was just going to make the point because on the debt exclusion and it shouldn't have the word override shown. We need to get that out of the thing. Sure. Yeah. But on the debt exclusion, we at this time last year didn't know what the school would be, you know. So he was carrying something for the school side. So we're going to be seeing. I'm assuming when we get this next week, Sean. It's going to say propose 
FY22, we'll move off of this. We'll get an FY23 actual and then a proposed 24 mm -hmm. with more years. So they're going to see it with FY28. You know, so yeah. this is just showing us what we've already done rather than the new piece we're going to be looking at. So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, okay, I, I understand. Make, I probably yeah. knew what that was last year, but I don't remember. <laughs> that, that, that's all. No, and that's why also on. because things have shifted since last year. So I, you know, some of these things aren't in the same year they were before. Yeah. You know, so we're going to see something. You know, we whatever we thought, whenever we thought we were building the fire station, it wasn't necessarily in FY twenty five anymore. So there's going to be some shifting around of numbers. Um, right. And I'm saying there's going to be because I haven't seen anything yet. So I just know Sean has got a lot of moving parts. Um, so can I just, Sean, on, if we know March 1st, um, my guess is Mandy's question was for FY24 proposed, will we have any money that we can count on? My guess is maybe not, but we might for 25, 26, 27. Will that be enough time? for us to do something or would that be mainly then the staff would start looking because some of what we've done is we can move things to a different year if we know there's going to be more money for something else so we can set take something out of the queue um, mm -hmm. or spend more money on potholes uh, now because next year we know we're going to get some additional money for some of the other so, so that we, we won't know any of that till March 1st is what you're, I think you're saying. I mean, it's possible that there's something that comes out sooner than that, that gives us some uh, direction. Uh, but March 1st, I just know is when the governor's budget will be uh, public. So we'll know for sure what's being assumed in that budget. Okay. And then the other reason why uh, we, we are including the port building projects or par as part of this is um, we wanted to see how the, the debt with those projects interacts with our capital funds, which are gonna uh, obviously need to pay for them, but also the other capital projects and uh, how much is available for them. So that's the that's the revenue side or the funding side. Um, down below, uh, so we call, um, so there's sort of three buckets of expenses that come out of what we call cash capital, the amount of funds dedicated to capital. Um, the first is actual debt, or um, it's, it's maybe a little misleading. It's debt for any projects that have been approved to be uh, from a borrowing. So the, you can think of actual debt as uh, projects that have been approved already as part of the capital plan. Projected debt are projects that are on the capital plan not approved, but we've listed them as a as debt for a funding source. So you can see how that comes in in the future. And then where it just says new projects, and maybe I'll put a little uh, parentheses there this year. Those are projects that we're proposing not to borrow for, that we would just use cash uh, to pay for them outright. And then down below, uh, same thing. So on the revenue side, you have the debt exclusion funding source. On the expense side, you'd have the debt exclusion um, costs uh, to pay the debt. And so those are really a wash in and out. And then we have other, same thing, any um, ambulance fund receipts, or if there's another type of uh, revenue there, that would come in and go out. So those match. And then state aid, same thing, it goes in and then comes out as an expense. And then the very bottom, you'll see sort of if the plan is in balance. And obviously, the uh, current year that we're in um, has to be balanced by the time it's voted on. Uh, but we also look to the out years to see how we're doing in the out years uh, from a balance perspective. And while 800,000 uh, looks bad, I'll say it's not as bad as it's been in other years. <laughs> um, it's it's not, um, I would say that's manageable over a five year um, plan in terms of moving things around and uh, moving things out, that that's not too bad. Pam? You're muted still. Do we hold, um, I'll, I'll call it a reserve specifically for cost overruns because we know that the, the costs are changing so rapidly uh, mm -hmm. rather than just trying to beef every line item up to estimate how much something might cost. Is there is there a fund that, for instance, the council can approve, but doesn't the, the town doesn't have to come back to ask to use money from it? So um, typically, no. Um, typically, we ask department heads to 
be conservative in their estimates to make sure they have enough money to cover the project. Um, but this past year, because the inflation was so dramatic, um, the council did approve a, a cost escalation reserve sort of as a standalone project that we don't have to go back to the council for approval. We can just tap into that. Um, and we anticipate using all of it because as you can imagine, <laughs> things have come in uh, more expensive than what we budgeted. Um, so we did do that for FY23. Um, it's a question whether or not to do it for FY24. If we, uh, I would say costs have not been rising quite as rapidly now as they were last year at this time when we were doing it. Um, so it may not be necessary for FY24, but that could be something the committee recommends um, you know, as we move forward. Thank you. And then just um, uh, Pam again, because you're new to this committee. The, so when we propose a project or when a project's approved, um, the budget for that project, it's set up in its own account, department heads go out and do the work. Um, if that project needs more money, we would have to come back and, and request more money. Uh, if it comes in under any savings goes into sort of a, a capital um, sort of uh, we call it a reserve account. Everything kind of falls into this reserve account. And then we can use those funds um, to appropriate for other capital projects. We still have to appropriate from it. So we can't just pull it. Um, uh, so it would come back to the council if we ever want to use those funds. Um, but that's what happens with capital. If it's not spent, if it's closed out, um, it falls into this account that we can then appropriate from. And that and presumably we... would be based on um like the first tier of priorities and then a second tier of priorities and typically right would yeah well we would, we would likely sometimes we use it as a funding source here so that could be one of the other type, types of things that might show up as an other would be using it as a funding source uh for the this year's plan if there's something we wanted to do that we didn't have enough um current year resources to do it and yeah. just you know to build on that last year um the a new process that was set up and it i think it it started just after the first year, but looking at outstanding funds that had been allocated that weren't spent and bringing them back. And what Sean just said, Pam, is they became not a for the same thing. So if it was in the school or in the town, it became as available to spend this year. Um, so in 2023, some of that money helped fund the Inflation Protection Fund. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Sonia, Sonia went out and said, we d discussed with people that we can close it out and we can say it's now available, but we didn't say it was for laptops in the school, so it has to be for laptops. So it just came back as a another source of funding for FY23 that was from past years um, rather than the current year. And Sonia aggressively uh, goes out <laughs> to department heads uh, for any projects that are three years or older and haven't been spent or fully spent and gets uh, explanation from the department head what the status of that project is. And if there's not a good um, explanation as to why it hasn't been spent yet, she will close those accounts out to this transfer reserve. So um, that is- uh, We'd love very... to see her coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so I will keep going. So this summary is just feeds off of the next few slides that I'll go through quickly and just note a couple of projects that might be interesting. Um, but all this flows up above, so it all ties out. So uh, we break the plan down by um, department or function. Uh, Pam, your question about a reserve, this is the first time we've done it, but this first section here was that reserve that we put up um, mm -hmm. of 100,000. And as Kathy noted, the um, funding source you'll see in the middle here is other. <laughs> and so that was from the prior year article, um, capital funds uh, that we were just talking about. So we'll see here just you'll see department, location, type. Um, type just means is it equipment, a facility, ground project, uh, the description of the project, the funding source, and then where it falls on the plan. And ultimately what the uh, this committee and the council are concerned with is what the plan is for the upcoming year. But obviously feedback on the other four years is um, is important too. So in facilities, um, we started setting aside $200,000 per year for energy uh, sustainability improvements. This is something that is uh, for Stephanie Ciccarello and um, in her department to allocate towards the projects that they think are the, the highest impact. Um, so for FY23, she sent me a list. A lot of that's going towards 
of some improvements at the uh, wastewater station to increase efficiency over there. A lot of it is to supplement vehicle purchases so that they can add hybrid technology. Um, and then there was a, a good chunk of it is going towards a couple buildings to increase insulation in those buildings to make them more efficient. I think it was Munson and Town Hall that there's a, um, a big chunk going there, going to those buildings for additional insulation. So um, she's on top of it in terms of planning out sort of how that money is going to be divvied up each year. Uh, we invested in a couple uh, accessi um, accessibility projects. This first one, portable assistive listening systems at the Bang Center. And then there was, you'll see down below in public works, there's um, 10 to 20,000 or so uh, to repair and replace the audible pedestrian signals at the crosswalks. Um, a couple of them were not loud enough or weren't working the way they're supposed to. So um, and I think that project's going on right now. Uh, there was siding replacement at the North Fire Station. I think that's either done or almost done. Uh, this compensation study, uh, there's 40,000 put in for human resources to do a, a study. Uh, and I know that project is out to bid right now. So we should have um, information on that in the next few months as to the results of that study. In fire and EM, uh, EMS. Excuse me. Uh, again, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I need to put my hand up. Um, so it looks like it's not just capital uh, equipment and facilities that can be planning studies. So it's mostly capital equipment. Um, I will say there are a couple things that fall more into planning um, or large one time expenses. This was a big topic last year that we discussed. Um, so something like the cyclical inspection program, for example, um, that's a large sort of one year, every 10 years type thing that we have to do in town where we go to every single property and uh, inspect them and report on the values. And so it typically requires the use of a consultant to do that because we don't have the staff on a regular basis to get to every property. Um, so there's things like that. The compensation study, I think, is another one that it's not a regular thing that we would want in our operating budget because we're not going to use it every year. And we wouldn't want our operating budgets to sort of fluctuate up and down uh, in that way. So there's a couple of things like that. I, these are probably the, the two main ones right here um, that, are, that I've seen recur over the years um, that fall into that bucket. Everything else is more or less related to a facility or a piece of equipment. Thank you. Uh, and fire this other, again, this is the uh, ambulance fund would be the source here to pay for uh, this equipment for the EMTs. Um, we have the schools, uh, public work. So there's about 1.5 million or so allocated towards roads between uh, cash capital and then the state aid, which is the chapter 90 money. And then there was another $200,000 specifically for sidewalks around town. And then you'll see the repair and replace of the um, audible pedestrian signals times 30,000. Uh, in planning, they had some, uh, we sort of started to set aside a recurring amount for planning because it seems like every year there's some project going on that requires outside expertise to evaluate uh, in FY23. The two projects were the, um, uh, these funds were intended for the solar bylaw and also to evaluate the Boltwood parking garage as to whether it could support, um, an, you know, another level or two potentially. And I think that pro the, the parking garage one I think is ongoing right now. We should know pretty soon if not already. And then the last couple pages, uh, our last page or so. So uh, we have we kind of put all the vehicles together. So uh, before they were spread out, we think it's help, more helpful to see them all together. Um, two notable ones last year, are the ladder truck, that's a, the most expensive single piece of equipment that I think we own. Um, and so uh, it was about 30 years old, maybe older. Um, and so we finally were able to, we were trying to find other funding sources, but just were not successful in finding a grant or something else to pay for it. Uh, so we finally put in for that. And I know, I believe they just got the order submitted in the last couple months. Um, and then we also put in for a new ambulance as well. And then the uh, question, Jennifer, you had earlier, those two projects were uh, 
an estimate for the school. This was a, I think I mentioned last year, this was an old estimate um, that we had carried forward. So we'll have to update this and then an estimate for the DPW building. So those figures will both be updated. And then we have a description of each project that goes in order as to how they appeared on the previous schedule. I won't get into that, but it gives a little bit more of a description of each one. And another thing that was a uh, change the last couple of years is there's a number of projects that we'd like to do if um, we had funding available, but they're not things that uh, we just, if we wanted to start balancing whether we should put something on the plan if we can't afford it. Um, and sort of that prioritization of putting things on it that we have to do because we can't afford them. Um, and so this first table here are things that are, are projects that have been identified. We don't currently have a funding source, but we didn't want to lose track of them. And they're things that we would be applying for grants for, for trying to find other funding sources. Uh, so you can see there's a handful of projects there and this list will get updated every year. And then there's another bucket of projects again that are um, projects that have been raised um, either by the community or the council as priorities that again, we don't have funding for, and these ones may need more analysis or exploration as to um, sort of the scope of the project. And, it, and But again, we wanted to keep them here so that we don't lose track that these are projects that have been raised uh, for, for consideration in the capital improvement program. Kathy? Yeah, Sean, if, if you just go back a little bit, uh, well, you've got the North Amherst intersection there, which of course up in North Amherst is a big issue for us. But um, my question is how things, getting things onto the list. So the, the, the school site being the Fort River site and the new housing developments going down in that East Village, there's been a lot more focus on the two intersections there, the one on the South. Would we put a, I think we should, let's put it that way, put a placeholder for those two intersections, knowing that we, you know, and so, so, so I've never been sure how this list gets evolved, but I'd like to get those on the list. And, mm -hmm. and just so people know, with schools, there's actually a state grant program called Intersections Near Schools. <laughs> Seems like it, it's a fit, you know, and then with the mass works things because of the new community housing that's coming in, they like to be in a place where there's something coming in. So I'm just, um, I'm requesting that when you come back to us, you try to figure out how to squint okay. some of that in. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Paul. I think I think that could certainly be a recommendation again of the committee, if that's a, you okay. know, any of these projects that um, the committee doesn't see on here that you feel are at the level, you know, at that level of, we should do this as soon as we find money for it. Um, I think the committee could recommend that for inclusion in this, in this list. Okay. Um, so this is an asset maintenance table. So this is to, again, to provide some additional information on uh, the cost of maintaining our buildings um, and our equipment. So at the top, you'll see the facility, um, square feet, approximate hours of operation. And then you'll see what was spent on um, facility staff to maintain those buildings. This personnel services is just the, the staff to maintain those buildings, uh, actual and then budget. And then you'll see utilities, cost for those buildings, and then any uh, expense accounts that are associated with those buildings. So you can get, a, uh, so again, I would just say this is a rough sense of what it costs to maintain that building. And then same thing down below for vehicles, you'll see um, the department uh, and then what they have in their budgets for vehicle maintenance and vehicle supplies. Kathy? Okay, so it's a similar question to this, since I'm now focused, J Jennifer, on schools. Um, the, our schools don't show up on this list of facilities. So there is a separate place you can go and look and say, how much does fuel, electricity, this kind of stuff, should we somewhere have another one? So that means, you know, the regional, neither the regional schools are on it and the library, Jones is not on it. Am I correct? Yeah, Jones is not on it. So it's just, it's a question because they're not, they're, some parts of it are part of the general fund. Some are in another world, but I'm just wondering if the town wouldn't want to 
have a consolidated list in some form and is if this isn't the nice right place to do it where to do it um and yeah so so we um so i know for this coming year i've added the public works building which didn't appear here previously and i also added the um uh, fire stations um I think we could add the school, the elementary schools, because we own those buildings and we have access to that information. So um, time permitting, I think we can add that. It may not be something that you see next week, but something that we could do before the final version. Um, and then I don't think we would add the high school or middle school just because we don't own those buildings. Um, we can get that information. Um, it's in, it is in their, their budget document, but just thinking about keeping this limited to the buildings that we own. Um, and same, and for the same reason, I don't know if we would want to include the Jones Library. We could certainly ask the departments for that information if it's in, something the committee wants to know when they come to present their projects. We could ask for that because um, it is it is listed pretty clearly in their their budget documents where they could pull it. So, Mandy, um, on a similar question, but facing vehicles. Um, this line's great. I was wondering if you could add a line that talks about how many vehicles there are, just so mm -hmm. we get an idea that community centers got one, say, or recreation has X number, just so we have a a way to look at the vehicle numbers per with these other maintenance numbers in mind. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how you'd want to do that. But I, I noticed that the school vehicles aren't on here either. And I believe the some of the schools elementary vehicles show up under our capital plan for replacement at some point. And so I think the school department and maybe even the library department, at least under the vehicles, since we sometimes fund the purchase of those vehicles through this capital plan should be columns on this. Yeah, let me look at the, I think we can definitely add the numbers. Let me look at how we would add the school vehicles. It's a little more, the school buildings are very easy to add. Um, the school vehicles are a little less because of the the mix with the region um, and the elementary schools and the vehicles are often shared between the two of them. So the budgets live in multiple places, um, but the, there might be a way to just kind of consolidate it all into one thing. So I'll take a look at that. Thanks. That really, if she if he puts DPW on, we would get the add up the DPW vehicles on this list, which would be great, Mandy. You know, like sure, just the number. Yeah, I, I am trying. I did. We did make some improvements at standardizing the language based on your comments last year, Manny Joe. So you can, you know, how many dump truck plows, for example, there are things like that. <laughs> um, so it'll be a little bit better there. All right, and then this is the list uh, that Kathy noted earlier of any project that's three years or older. We list. We've been providing that list here, and then um, how much is available that hasn't been spent, and then what the status is. So again, this year, it's everything from FY19 and older that hasn't been spent. And then the year you're gonna see next week will be FY20 and older. And unsurprising, uh, since we've been publishing this list, I think it's gotten smaller. So that's a, that's a positive outcome of the list. Um, either things getting turned back or, or just getting these things done. Uh, so this is a little bit of historical information um, on the capital improvement program and uh, some of the things, a lot of this actually started back with J the original JCPC that came up with some good uh, guidelines for capital. And so that's what this is uh, showing. Almost done. This is the um, capital inventory. So the first couple pages are, are the um, are buildings. And we try to highlight buildings that are slated for replacement or removal. I will say it's not super helpful, the value. The values are insured value, which um, is not going to give you a great replacement cost estimate for that specific building. And then vehicles uh, with the department, make and model, and some additional information. And again, the color coding, so sort of the light orange are vehicles that already have funding to be replaced. The more bold orange is the 
uh, or vehicles that are proposed to be replaced with uh, this year's capital. And then green are any vehicles that have um, hybrid or electric technology uh, already as part of them. One heads up, I'll just say for this year, sort of a judgment call that we made was to remove the equipment from this list, the trailers. And we thought that that really sort of diluted the list and made it harder to understand how many vehicles each department had. Um, so I've removed the equipment again, which are mostly trailers. Um, and I'll you know, welcome your feedback this year when you look at it. I think it's much easier to kind of understand how many vehicles each department has once with the equipment removed. Um, there's about 50 or 60 lines of trailers. Um, so again, interested in your feedback on whether you like that change or don't like that change. And then we finish with the debt schedules uh, for projects. So this top section, this these are capital projects that have already been approved within the general fund uh, for uh, with a debt authorization. So projects that we will borrow for. And you can see our either the, the set amount that will be paid off um, each year or an estimate, depending on if the project has started yet. The next section in the yellow are projected. Again, these are those those ones that aren't approved yet, but they're on the capital plan shown as a borrowing. So you can see how they impact our debt going forward. The blue is CPA. Um, again, there's a separate funding source for that. So you don't, it doesn't really eat away at our capital funding, uh, but just so you can see what's been approved from CPA. In the orange peach color, uh, that's our regional debt assessment. So each year the region um, assesses us for operating uh, costs, but they also assess us for debt. And so, this weekend, we have a four town meeting and I'm sure we'll find out more information on what they're uh, anticipating for future debt assessments. But last the last four town meeting, the plan they projected had quite a bit on there and had our debt assessment going up a lot. Um, and so that's one thing to keep an eye on when uh, during the four town meeting is what are they projecting the capital assessment to the town of Amherst to be. Uh, because that directly impacts how much uh, how much capital funding we have for everything else It comes out of the same bucket. And then the final few lines here are the building projects uh, and our best estimate at that time. Again, this will get updated. And that's it. Mandy. Yeah, that regional debt assessment line, I remember last year we picked, where you picked that 800,000 just going forward as an estimate. Um, are you sticking with that? I, I guess we'll find out next week when you give us the plan, but, um, <laughs> Or is that number going to be closer matched to whatever's projected at the four towns and based on the four towns meeting discussion and stuff, or are we going to just stick with a flat number? I, I think what you'll probably see at this meeting is the 800,000, um, but depending on the conversation um, at four town meeting, that might get updated. Um, and I think it may be a conversation that finance committee and, and the council have to have based on what you hear at the four town meeting. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard number because you have to approve it, right? And then so they can project and tell us what they think the number is going to be, but ultimately until you approve it, um, it's not set. And just like our capital plan, you want to make sure all the projects are on there and so you don't lose sight of them. But often when you get to the year that you're about to, to uh, propose, sometimes projects fall back because there's only so much, you know, only so much capacity of staff to complete projects. Um, and so that's another reason why often it'll come down a little bit as we get closer to the um, to those projects being a reality. Thanks. Jennifer, I saw your hand went up. Was it on the same topic or? Yes, not a... I withdraw. Sean answered my question. Thank you. So uh, any final questions? I think the last thing we're gonna do is just quickly go through the, the timeline for the rest of um, JCPC. Okay. All right, so here we are today on the 9th. So we've got a plan to meet every Thursday uh, for the next six or seven weeks. Uh, so next week we will present the preliminary plan, which will include the capital inventory and unspent articles. Um, we will take general questions. I don't anticipate, I will work on these times, I don't anticipate it will take that long. Um, and we may have to kind of uh, cut it off at two o'clock when the resident capital um, requesters come in to start at, uh, do their presentations. And then after next week's meeting, we start getting into department presentations. So 
on the 23rd, we have the town facilities department, uh, police department, and school, uh, school and town IT coming to present their projects. On the second, uh, we have tentatively have the fire department and public work scheduled. Um, the fire department has uh, noted a conflict that they might have with the second. So it's possible that uh, the fire department swaps with somebody else on that uh, March 2nd date. Uh, on March 9th, we have school facilities and transportation, we have planning and recreation, and that should those sections should cover all the projects that we anticipate uh, requesting for the upcoming year, or all the departments that we uh, expect will request projects for the upcoming year. And then you have a couple uh, meetings at the end to finalize your recommendation and, um, and discussion, and you have technically you could do one more uh, Thursday if you wanted to, if you weren't able to complete it in these two Thursdays. You could take one more uh, week to meet. We try to. Um, we've been asking that the recommendations done by the end of March, so that the town manager then has a month to um, fold in any um, any recommendations into his plan. Kathy, um, so Sean, I'm just thinking about um, our report. So, so Pam, since you're new, we a lot of what you see is just attached to our report. So we're not, you know, doing redoing this in any way, but we are potentially changing specifics for a given year or making comments. So we have to do, when you've given us a day to talk about any recommendations we're making, um, and then a week later, I guess we're reviewing the report. So there's basically a week for the report to get drafted and, and hopefully sent out to people before we meet. So are, are you saying we maybe, because I think we're one week later on this than we were a year ago, but I'm just, are we, the, I'm just looking, there is a March 30th, but you're trying to get, you're trying to get the report completed by the week before. So there, there's a you, little, March 30th. I'm not, I'm not asking for another week, so it might go extremely right. quickly. Um, the the less we're doing in terms of making changes, you know, the simplest would be, we love your proposal. Thank you. <laughs> you know, but, but for some of these discussion items, and then the other is I liked what you did last year is if questions came up or we sent you questions that weren't answered during the meeting for police, for fire, you came to us at the next meeting with answers. So that was, I thought, a really good way of, you know, so moving our discussion on a, you know, how do we handle this? Um, and I'm, uh, are you going to be using that process again this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. We'll log questions and, and get make sure the committee gets the responses before you do provide your recommendation. And, and you, again, I have no issues if you use March 30th. I mean, there could be other things that delay you that you might want to take advantage of March 30th if um, if a department maybe runs long in their presentation and there's more, you know, we don't want to cut off questions before, you know, we don't want to cut off questions when you department heads come to uh, present to you. So it could just be that maybe a department runs long and we're not able to get to everything that meeting that might just push things back too. So, um, so yeah, March 30th is totally fine if we need it. Um, for whatever reason. So I'm just thinking everyone should gray shade that date, you know, hold that time, you know, not, not thinking we necessarily are using it, but that, that, cause then we're done. And then this, this goes directly to Paul, but goes into the council package as this is what the committee recommended. So it's not going through a separate process. It's going right up, up, right. up, up lateral, whatever, whichever way we think of it. Yeah. And I'll do my best to, uh, but the by Friday of the prior week, post the um, information in the packet for the following Thursday. This one, this coming week, might be the one that I might not get the FY24 plan in there until Monday or Tuesday. But um, but generally, I have all the project descriptions and all of that's uh, already in place, so I can get those into the packet a week ahead of time. Or I might just do them all now, so you can go ahead and look um, for all the weeks if you want. Does anyone have any questions on all of this? Pam. Not a question, but um, just to say thank you for all the work that goes on ahead of ahead of time to prepare all the information because that's 
really it's it's organization that's really appreciated. Thank you. Now I feel like we've got this committee really humming in terms of uh, we have a very good process and everyone um, you know provides good feedback and things that ultimately do make it into the town manager's um, final draft. I think every year there's been recommendations from this group that have been incorporated into the town manager's plan. Um, so it's it's a process that's really beneficial to the town and getting the best uh, plan possible. And I, I think, Alex, I think you are the longest member of this committee and can talk about what it used to look like, what you used to get compared to what we're getting now on day one. Um, it's it's both the quantity, but but how much better organized it is so that, you know, to that, that we're not making decisions where we can't actually make a decision. What do you do with a, but a set of proposals that's $10 million more than we have, you know? And so this is, I think it's such an improvement. Now, all the inventory work um, that's been put into this and uh, what's in the queue, it's, it's, it's remarkable. So thank you very much. Yeah. And some of that um, is just the JCPC has changed, right? A JCPC in the past, as Alex knows, JCPC used to be the, you know, making the, the plan, right? So it was a much messier project process by necessity because you would present whatever you guys recommended was the plan. Um, I think with the charter, it changed to more of an advisory reaction to the town manager's plan. So I think that's why it feels smoother now, but um, JCPC had a pretty sophisticated process back then to um, being on the other side of it back then. Um, so no, it's a, just in general, I think JCPC is a you know, something that we always tell other towns that they should create something like it because it's just a very helpful process in town government. Well, so any other questions or comments? Because if there aren't, I will see if there are any public comments. We have um, been taking public comments at the end of every meeting. Um, and with you telling everyone that the all the reports are going to be there in advance, um, you know, the whoever is participating may want to be weighing in on specific proposals, but I think we're still going to do it at the end rather than the beginning and just collect those comments. So we are open for public comments. And if anyone has a question or a comment, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any. So thank you very much. Um, and um, I guess we, we, we're pretty informal. We just, we don't even vote to adjourn. We just adjourn. So next week, and, and Pam, I'll send you a little format sheet if you want to use what we were using for minutes. But we usually, we make an attempt to have the minutes in the next packet. And it's partly so that if someone missed the meeting, they can read that rather than watch the full Zoom account. Um, and it also creates a record for where we were asked a question, like we we looked at some of these charts and and then we can come back to it, you know, just so it's, it's not a verbatim as much as um, moving toward thinking that that's helping with the record for the of what we're going to write as a report. Kathy, so, I can't remember, do we vote minutes or did we come up with a process where we would just where you would uh, I, I submit think, them and see if there I mean, are any we changes. We can ask people if they liked it last time, but um, everyone got to see them and I did a review of them and just finalized them. But then sometimes people would say, oh no, you didn't capture, something was missing. And then we corrected them. So we didn't read and vote on them. We didn't take meeting time with that. And so if right. that process is okay, we, you know, we, we would amend them if someone sends something and then we would post it as final, you just stayed as draft. Yeah. So I just, I just made an effort to make sure that it, it, in my opinion, captured most of the meetings since we have the Zoom record as well. So I, I think that's an efficient process because we have all these departments coming in to talk to us. So yes, Pam. Where are the Zoom uh, records kept? So um, they will be, I'll have to double check. I can't remember if we post a link to them on the minutes themselves or if it's just in the, um, if the there's town, a pack. The town's YouTube channel would have yeah, all it's of Yeah, it's YouTube definitely on the YouTube channel. Yes, but I think yeah. we also were posting links uh, in the minutes themselves. So you could just click on the, the link. You know, and, and we were doing it in the minutes and we, we can double check, check the web page for this committee because it's been really nice on the school building 
they created a click that gets you to the right YouTube space. Right. You know, so that you don't have to figure out where on YouTube is JCPC. And so it just takes you right there to the whole collection. So it's um, it's been a useful feature of that page. Um, so Pam, but, but Sean can send you as soon as we adjourn, there is a recording and that's what we've been using with the building committee. Um, our OPM is doing the minutes and she just gets it right after the meeting. So she doesn't have to wait to find the posting and then, but then the minutes give the actual link. So hopefully that will work. So any, I don't think there, I'm not seeing it on of hand. So I think we're adjourned. Um, and we are adjourned at 207. Nice to meet you all. Have, glad to have you with us. Thank you.